Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, Mrs. Farmer, what brings you here? Food. <laughs> That's what I thought. You know what? We, we talked about this show and we talked about things that you like and that I like. I like certain things that you make and there's certain things that go along with everything. Right. And we picked one thing tonight, the two special things that we really like. That's right. I love your... Spinach pie. Where'd you get that recipe? It's actually, well, Spanakopita is what you call it. If you're mm -hmm. Greek, grandmother used to make it. And I kind of, I hope I remember everything she does. You seem to like it, so I hope I'm putting it together no, like she like did. It. You not. love it? It's delicious. And you know what? It's good with everything. Yes, it is. So we thought, okay, you picked one, I picked one. I thought, will they go with each other? I mean, like yes. peas and carrots. That's right. So I started thinking, and I asked you, and your choice was? I like your uh, chili, your white chili. If mm -hmm. you'll make that, it's delicious. If I make it? Yes. Have you got a dollar? I got two dollars if you'll make a big pot. Then I'll make a big pot. Okay. You know what? What do you like about it? What do you think about taste-wise? I like the cilantro you put in it. That makes it very good. You know what? That brings out the flavor of the beans. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't put celery in it. You don't have to, but I like the celery in it. And the white pepper. To me, the white yes. pepper makes it. Now, a little bit goes a long way. And the meat. I love the meat because you put, like, chicken or turkey. That's delicious. Well, tonight, it's wild game inside and out. Wow. <laughs> so we're going in for a little while, then okay. we're going out. It's going to be a big night. Okay. Anyhow, without further ado, Mrs. Will you, will Farmer, you assist me? Well, certainly. All right, because I'm... That'll be an extra dollar. Okay. And this recipe... You got three dollars? I got three dollars. And this recipe is actually in our cookbook. All right. So I think it's on page 33, so right. people can get it from there, but this is delicious. So if you'll get me a burner going... I'll get your burner going. Now, there's a lot to butter in this recipe, so it's very good for you. That's why it's so good. That's right. But we're just going to go ahead and I want to saute some, have you saute some onions for me. And this okay. is like one onion, probably about a medium onion. Okay, look at these onions. They're looking Perfect. good. What, what now? I have fresh organic spinach. You can use box frozen if you want, but I just kind of like to saute it in the onions. I think it, and it kind of will, will uh, make it saute down and put it in a dish and cook it all down. So the just start putting it in throwing here? it in there, yes. Let it wilt? Let it wilt. All right. That's the word I'm looking for, wilt. Let it wilt down as you stir it. Let it wilt. Now, you don't have to use organic. That's a life choice that we've made. People say, right. well, it costs so much. What's more important to me, mm -hmm. I'm willing to pay a little bit more yeah. for organic or to find out that it's been raised properly. I know it's like a lot, but it's because it does, it well, wilts it down. It wilts down really yeah. quick. Because if you get a box, a little box of frozen, it's a lot smaller. You Ooh, know what? Uh, that smell eat, good? I could eat that right there. And I like lots of spinach in it. You can see all those big pots disappearing? Mm-hmm. Let's keep it turning over on ourselves. If, combination of the heat and the... Mm. Now, we're going to preheat our oven to... 350 degrees, and we're going to do it for about 45 minutes. We're going to let that cook. This is something that tastes really light, but there's probably a few calories yeah, in there. It's got some but you know what? Go ahead and tell us, give us a rundown of the ingredients, if you will. Okay. And actually, after we do this, we're going to get that bowl that I have out here in front of us and what put... What is it? The bowl. It's a bowl? <laughs> A, how do you how say do you spell it? That? How do you say it? It's a bowl. Bowl. Okay, a bowl. Now, what'd you call it? A bowl. A bowl. It's got a couple syllables. Anyways, we're going to put the spinach and onions back in there. We're going to add feta, feta cheese, cottage cheese, an egg. It's wonderful. I'm telling you what, this is good stuff. Is that enough? That looks good. And you know what? Look how little that got. And that's perfect. Let's dump it in this bowl. You did a very good job. Yeah. Does it make you happy? Yes, it does. Are you still going to pay me about $3? <laughs> yes, I will. It's worth it. We'll get all that out of there. All right, and what we're making now is our filling for our spinach pie. And I have here two cups of feta cheese. That's the secret ingredient. Greeks love mm. feta. So we're going to put that in there. And then I have one cup of cottage cheese. College cheese. College. They used to say All right. An egg. An egg. The whole egg. Kind of brings it together. Yeah, we're just going to hold. All right. Mix it up in there. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'm just going to mix this up. Mm, 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 mm. And that's going to be our filling. Oh, it smells good already. It smells good. And uh, using phyllo dough, which you make another one of my favorites with. What's another thing you Baklava. make? Baklava. <laughs> have we made that? Yes, we have, actually. Oh. We've made that on the show. Now, I do need to melt a whole stick of butter. You want to use it? We can use that, yes, because it's all going together, so it can right. have this stuff no on it. No sense dirtying up no. the pan. because we're going to use this to brush between every layer. I like one pan cooking. I do, too. The next thing we're going to do, I think we can put, do everything in one pan. I like that. Yeah, less dishes, right? All right, there's a stick of butter. Drop it in. Mrs. Farmer. Yes. Your butter is melted. Thank you. Now comes the fun part where we build it. It's a little bit of work. But mm -hmm. It's this is phyllo dough. You can buy this in the store usually. It's in. It's usually by the pie crust mm -hmm. and stuff. People like to, it's actually good to eat. It kind of like melts in your mouth. When we were little, we just eat it. Mm. And you want to let it thaw because if it's frozen, it breaks up. And even if it does break, you can still use it. It's not. It's it kind of just comes together. But we're gonna ours turned out really nice because we let it thaw. 
So it's gonna be perfect. So you buy this in the frozen section. You buy it in the frozen. Okay. Very thin. Yes. And see how they just, they I cut great. that by hand Thursday. Did you? Yeah. Put a little butter. You're gonna be my butter guy. Put a, just butter the bottom of this pan a little bit. Brush it? Yeah. Just a little bit. And we are gonna layer 10 sheets of this. You can see it's like paper thin. And it will stick. And if it breaks, I mean, you see how it is? You kind of just pat it in. It doesn't really matter if it breaks. Nah, put a little butter on there. You can cut it if you want it perfect, but I'm not worried about butter that. Butter every sheet? A little bit of butter, yeah. You know, this is one of those things that I've had that you've made a million times, but I've never watched you make it. Here's three, four. We're going to count ten. And it doesn't have to be exactly ten. That's just kind of something I've always followed. All right, that's about ten. Let me put one more on here. Now, here's olive. You don't have to do this, but I kind of, in between layers, I like to just put a bunch of knock a little olive oil in there for me. Brush it around kind of pretty. Right. You see how it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it all just, see how it bends over? Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Now we're going to take half of this mixture. Let's put about half of it in here. It's making my mouth water. It's delicious, isn't it? That looks like about half to you. Yep. All right. Let me smooth it in there. You know, the Greeks have some great oh, recipes. Gee. I think. I always ate good. All right. Let's go another 10 layers. So how many layers you do here? Just keep doing this till you run yeah, out. Yeah, no, we're gonna pour the rest of this and then oh, we're gonna the rest put, of it. We're okay, gonna put the rest you. of it in now. Let's get all of it because it's good. And this is something if you go to a Greek restaurant, people order this as their main meal, even just a huge piece of this. Mm. More butter. Lots of butter. Load that up. We're getting to the end here. Yeah, well, I'll Wanna give pour you, some? You That's some a good butter? idea. You know, good idea. I'll give you some butter. Just tuck it in. Remember my baklava we cut? You don't need to cut this. This will just cook and you cut the squares. It's not like the baklava. You don't mm -hmm. have to. All right. How's that look? Maybe put a little olive oil on the top of that. What do you think? 350 oven. 350 and we're going to give How it long? 45 minutes and we're going to pull it out and let it sit a minute and then we're going to have wonderful mm -hmm. spinach mm -hmm. pie. That ought to roll around about the same time as our chili gets done. Perfect. All right, here's the basics. Let's just run through it real quick. We have cumin, basil, chili powder, white pepper, black pepper, and we have some bouillon cubes, mm -hmm. just to give it that Perfect. good stocky taste. 28 ounces northern beans, I like those yeah. very much. A pound and a half, this is turkey in this case. We got some corn, just got some canned or frozen corn because we ate all our good stuff. That's right. <laughs> Cilantro, onion, and garlic. Yum. And that's pretty much where we're going. And chicken broth. And some celery. Some celery and jalapenos and sugar. Oh, wow. All right, now the great thing is we got one pan we're going to dirty up. I like that. And I'll have to wash later. Yeah, whatever. So one pan for me to wash. Uh huh. But, but that's better than two. Did three. you have to use all these bowls? I mean, okay, that's nice it is nice. It is nice. I don't mind washing don't them. Don't you see like the. I love it. Yeah. I can't wait to wash yeah, them. There you okay. Much. Okay, this recipe starts a lot like your recipe. Okay, butter. A lot of our recipes start <laughs> like that. Go ahead and plop that in there. Now you could use oil. I would recommend less than this, but we're just. We really like our butter. Yes, we do. Now, if you don't mind, take a nice big yellow sweet onion. Let's cut that up. Now, we're also going to take our celery. Just a little bit of celery. To me, adds a lot. And how do you want these? Like just little pieces? Yeah, little, uh, little oh. squares. What a nice flavor that imparts. I'm pressing the garlic in here. Are you impressed? I'm crying over I here. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm happy with you. So we're getting all our onions. Now that's a whole onion. All right, go ahead and pop them in there. All of them? Oh, so, yeah, those are pretty good sized jalapenos. That's enough. Let's right. use that. Whew. I think you're scared, aren't you? I am scared. You don't want it that hot. Now at this point, we're going to take half of our beans and we're just going to mash them up a little bit. Mash them? Mash them up a little bit. That way you get that good soupy deal going. Now you can put these in a the food processor if you'd like but I need the exercise. Now again, you can use chicken on this, you can use anything you want. It's up to you. I'm just gonna mash that first half of beans in there up. It's about 14 ounces. What do you think, Mrs. Farmer? I'm liking watching you. Usually I come home from work and you have this made for me, so this is kind of nice watching you make so, it. <laughs> we, yeah. Some of our favorite recipes. I wonder if that's part of it, because if you, know, if you don't make it yourself, maybe it's, it's You like better. it better? Now, hey, look what we've got. We've got our mashed beans mashed? In, our, in a bowl. Okay. In our and our pie, a pie is in the oven it behind like it's us. Good. Uh -huh. <laughs> we got all this wonderful stuff going. You ready for the next step? I am ready. What do we do? All right. Now I'm going to take my already mashed beans. Okay. I'm going to put those in there. 
one bowl of beans, about 14 ounces, if you want to do it from a can. And I'm going to take, uh, I don't know, let's go ahead and put a cup in there. Okay. All right, that is our chicken stock. Okay. Now, we got a pretty good base right there. And you know how it smells good as spinach pie? Pie? Or pie. pie. It's paella. It's three syllables. Paella? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're lightheaded from, okay. from no food. All right, now I'm coming back with our spices. All right. First, the cumin, the basil, chili powder, white pepper, a dash of black pepper, just to add a good stocky bouillon flavor, a bouillon cube. Let's, I will go ahead and break that up in there, smash it. Let's do two. All right. Just to give it that rich flavor. From there, we're gonna put our corn. Love corn. Then we're gonna take the whole beans. Okay. Then you could go ahead and cook this down, but really, I want all my beans done. So I can put those beans in there. Yeah. And the great thing about this is it's only gonna take, you know, 25, 30 minutes to get everything cooked down because everything's already cooked. Now when does the meat go in? You wait? That's coming up here very shortly. Okay. Now it's starting to look like what that we looks talked good. about. That looks delicious. All right, now we're gonna come back with some more. This will thicken up as we move along. Now at this point, we'll take some turkey. Put that up in the size I desire. Okay. Doesn't not, really matter, does it? Not huge chunks, but you know. You want to get it on a spoon. Let's go pound and a half here. Yeah, we like a lot of meat. Thick. Now, this will thicken up, and some people like it with a little brothy, you know, thing going on. I like my stuff thick. thick. Would you cut me up some of those cilantro tops? I will. And uh, we're going to do about a quarter cup of that. You know what, mm. if, you want, if you want to, go ahead and drop that in there. That really? Way. Yeah. You can start releasing its flavor. Oh, I like that. It smells so good. Looky there. And how long must we wait? You know, the thing is, we've cooked everything. We don't have to worry about the meat cooking. We don't have to worry about the beans cooking. We usually don't eat a whole pot, but you know what happens. The longer it sits in the fridge, I think the better it gets. Oh, yeah. My stomach's growling. I'm going to get a low boil going on okay. here. A little simmer. Now clean up our mess. And we're gonna come back. You want some more turkey in there? Put it all in there, don't you think? You think? Yeah. That doesn't look good. No, it doesn't. We probably should just look at it. Man, oh man, oh man. Now here's here's a lot of we take these chips and we dip it. Once it gets down, it's mostly solid. Mm -hmm. Some people break it up in it. Some people put it on a take the drier parts of this out, put it on a tortilla shell, roll it up Yum. and eat it. Oh my! Would you please cut me a slice? I of will. That? I can't stare at it much longer. What do we try first? I don't know. I'm gonna try this because I this is what you, know you made what? I am me. too because that's smoking pretty bad over. That's pretty hot. That's delicious. Mm. Oh my goodness. Now in a minute, I'm just gonna mix this all up. You did a good job. In. But the flavor. Delicious. Delicious. Mm. Oh, I made it for good. days. Wow. I'm gonna try some pie. Mm. Mm. I smashed it. Oh, I love it. Let me see, it's just out of the oven. What do you think? <laughs> mm. Delicious. If you've ever had like a really good spinach dip, it's hard to explain mm -hmm. if you've never had this. And most people probably have, but it's so easy to fix. And so look at that wonderful goodness in there. It's all so melted. Cheesy pastry. With onions. Nice spicy soup. And you know what? You can cut little small portions out and have mm -hmm. it, you know, yeah. at a party. Like an appetizer. Or you could have it for dinner. Or we could eat the whole thing right now. Mm. That might be your best batch. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Now if we only had something sweet. Mm. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy Bama the other day on the phone. Mm-hmm. He said, Farmer, he said, have you ever heard of this? I'm like, I've never heard of this what before. What is it? I, what is it? I, I brought it up here. Okay. It's in the cold cooler, and it takes about, well, no time at all to put together. Okay. This is common in the South. All right, let's take one more bite, and then I'll show you. I know. It seems strange. This is odd items, but... You know, I consider myself from the South, but Bama is from... The deeper south. Yeah. He's, from, he's from Alabama. He acts like everywhere you go, it's it's just everywhere really? down there. Now, you know what? I love all these separate. I love all them separate. Now, the, the whole thought process is 
boggling my mind, but I like strange things. Yeah. But to him, he said it wasn't strange. Bought this special so we could do a nice and easy little decoration on top. This is just regular mayonnaise. So mayonnaise on a pear. A dollop. Really? I know. They're going to look cute, actually. Then awesome. guess what? What's next? Cheese. Okay. I'm using Colby Jack just to change it up a bit. Get a nice Can color. help you? And this is dessert or is this like an appetizer? What is this? Well, to me, it's like the best of both worlds. Now, remember we had the banana croquettes, which was kind of a very regional yeah. thing down in that part of the state. Look how cute. What? They're cute. <laughs> you know, I'm going to find a little and stick the whole dang on thing in my mouth. I'm going to have to take a bite. This one's pretty right here. Can I take that one? That is interesting. I like that. That is really good. Because you got sweet, you got the mayonnaise, you got cheese. Isn't that some? Mm. Who knew? Delicious. Babineau. He's a good cook. All right. I love being in the cabin, but I also love being outside. We're going outside in a minute. Remember to check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Like it, and also go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I've been inside, all I can be inside, it's time to go outside. You got your cowboy hat handy? I got my cowboy, cowboy hat. Cowboy cooking. It's coming up, you don't want to go away. <laughs>Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen, Cowboy Cooking Edition. Hey. Hey. Nice cowboy hat. Where'd you get it? Same place you got yours. Are you a real cowboy? Yeah, I'm real. Are we you? We got cows, don't we? <laughs> yeah, We're we getting got, them this spring. We got sheep. That makes this official. We're going to take a roast. How do I know this is a roast? It says because roast. Because it says roast <laughs> on it. R-O-A-S-T. Now, that's what happens when, a, when you package your meat or have it packaged. You need to know what it is. That came right here from the deer. This is a variation on a recipe that I did a long time ago. Probably 10 years ago, on Kentucky Field, we did a stew. Now, with that stew, we did a red wine, venison, currant jelly, Yummy. bouillon com combination. In the end, we thickened it up with a little bit of flour, and it was absolutely delicious, and people everywhere really reacted to that. This is a variation on that. This is something that I have never measured out. You know, a lot of times, before we start our cooking show, there was no measuring at all. That's right. But people want to know basically <laughs> how much stuff we're putting into our recipes. So now we have to actually measure. So we've got our pan heating up. This is a fairly simple process. Now, if you're doing this at home in your oven, 350 degrees in a closed pan and a roast pan, however you right. want to do that, it'll work just as well. But you won't get that nice little smoky flavor we're getting here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this out of the bag. This is one I just shot, a deer I just shot this past season. Okay, we're going to take this now, and I'm going to bring this hot pan over here and set it on a rock. And if you will, all you have to do is dump that out into this hot pan. Right. I'm going to put a little oil in it, and then we're going to sear that on all sides. So now we go get our hot pan that's been hung up right over the fire. Salt and pepper. Just a bit of salt and a bit of pepper. Gonna get that nice and seared. Now, Nikki, if you will, order me some onions. So you want big chunks? Now, at this point, the obvious, you know what, we're not gonna even gonna peel these carrots. Okay. I'm just gonna cut them up in pieces about like that because, as you know, some good stuff in there. Plus, I'm just kinda lazy. One arm guy peeling a carrot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use probably only an onion and a half on this. We've already seared our meat. If you were inside and you wanted to go ahead and take your onions and saute those in butter right. and get those cooked down, the way we're gonna do it, we're gonna cook it over the fire. Now that takes a little specialty and you really gotta watch it. You can't let it get boiling too much. And it's gonna take several hours to do this. If you did it in the oven, I would recommend 325 for probably around three and a half to maybe three, three hours and 45 yeah. minutes. This is a slow cooking deal. Remember, this is venison. Now I know where this venison came from right up yes, the right. hill. I mean, it is fresh. So let's cut these up into pretty good sized chunks. Maybe cut two more cuts on that. All right. We'll cut up some more carrots in a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead, and now with the stew that I did a while back, 
We had the currant jelly, the red wine, and the bouillon banging around in there. Right. So you had sweet, and you had salty, and you had kind of that the tang and the yeastiness of the wine. Right. We got the same thing going on here, but you know what I started thinking? Honey, brown sugar, and mustard. Wow, that sounds good. Um, how could you go wrong there? You can't. Now, if you, if you take a little bit of rosemary and a little bit of thyme and add to this mix, you have to have some beer. We know some guys. Yes, we do. We're gonna use Country Boy. We just met with those guys. They're the nicest guys, well yeah. knowledgeable. They know their stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two beers. Then we're gonna take probably around three and a half, maybe more cups of beef stock. Let's put all the liquids in the bowl. Then let's lay our assorted vegetables out in there. We're also gonna add about five or six potatoes. I'm gonna use red skins and we're not gonna peel them. Instead of a whole bunch of salt, well, actually we'll get our salt like this, the bouillon. If you use the bouillon cube sometimes, it gives salty or flavor. you can use granules mm -hmm. as well. It gives, it gives it nice robust, it just adds to it. All right, I'm gonna drop in two bouillon cubes and I'm gonna go I've never measured this, but I'm gonna say probably a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar, a tablespoon and a half of mustard. I'm just gonna mix that up just a little bit. Now we're gonna finish off with a little thyme, rosemary, probably a third of a teaspoon. Now you remember our precious honey that we slung not too long ago? I'm gonna put about, oh, I don't know, a tablespoon of that. Then we put the top on, hang it up, and let her roll. Okay, now I'm preparing a pan over here with cornmeal. I've already got some oil on the bottom of it. Now this is similar to what you do when you're making a pizza. We just don't want our bread to stick. Set that aside. Keep the ashes out. Once that bread's ready to roll, here in a little while, we're gonna time that so they finish up at the same time. All right, now you've noticed our light has changed. It's later in the day. It's been almost three something hours. We're still cooking nicely over there. It smells good. And You've noticed I've set my 12 inch pan down there and I have put how many on the bottom? I don't know, how many? Eight on the bottom. Okay. 17 on the top means how many degrees? 350? 350. Yay. You know, a lot of the simple stuff that we cook is at 350 degrees. We're gonna drop this bread in. Okay. Now, recently I tried a bread and then I started variations on the bread and so on and so forth, but this is not one of those quick, quick, quick things, but it is worth the wait because there's yeast, you have to knead it and you have to roll it down. And it's a fairly lengthy process, but let me give you the overview right here. Here's your dry ingredients. We're gonna take a quarter cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of salt, two packages of yeast, two cups of flour, two tablespoons of black pepper, a half of a tablespoon of rosemary, half a teaspoon of powdered garlic, and I'd say a teaspoon of basil, dry basil. Then, on the stove, we're gonna take a 12 ounce beer, half a cup of water, and three tablespoons of oil, and we're gonna heat until very warm. About like you'd wanna do, you know, you'd stick your toe in the bath water to make sure it's, you know, it's not too hot, and you're just like, mm, I guess I can get in there, but it's gonna be hot. Now, what you're gonna do, is you're gonna slowly beat the liquid into the flour until blended. Then, increase speed on your beaters for about three minutes. After you've got to that point, you're gonna stir in three cups of flour with the wooden spoon slowly. Then you turn your dough out onto a flour surface and knead until it's smooth and elastic. And it's starting to smell good right now already. Oil your clean bowl, turn your dough to coat with the oil and cover with the towel until doubled. And that's gonna take about an hour. After the dough has doubled, you take it out, you punch it down, you just take it out and roll it up again turn it out onto the flour surface and shape it into a ball. Place it in the Dutch oven and cover for 45 minutes, or you can leave it in that bowl, it doesn't really matter. Now, at the last little bit, if you want some stuff to stick to the top and make it look pretty, you can put some like egg white or something on the top and sprinkle it with whatever you want. Then you're gonna bake this for 30 to 45 minutes, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna check Sounds it good. in a half hour and see where it's at. So we're at the stage right now where we're gonna take that and put it right in that pan, which is now heated up. Now see, I got this out of a Lodge cookbook and then I started adding stuff to it and adding stuff to it. I like what you added. Yeah, and it really makes, I mean, the, the house smelled so wonderful. Yes. Here's what it looks like. Yeah. 
You see the ingredients in that? Now, we don't want this to be a perfect shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to look good when it comes out. And we're going to, we're going to check this in about a half hour. As I look over here, you can see the steam coming out. You can smell the roast. You can also yes. start to smell the bread. You know, there's nothing like cooking outside if you can. But again, any of this stuff you can do inside right. as well. Now, you could take that bread and you could put that in an uncovered dish in the oven. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have heat all around it. And that right. dish right there, it has heat all around it. Um, I think it tends to brown a little bit better here outside with the coals on top. Mrs. Farmer, why don't we just yes. have one plate? I thought we could share. We do share. That's sweet, doesn't it? You must like me. I do, and it's a big plate, see? It is a big plate. You know what? Most of the time, now that we're empty nesters, mm -hmm. we try not to dirty dishes. We'll That's eat right. off the same plate. We'll get a big hunk of meat and put it on there and cut it up, and we'll eat off of it. Don't you miss all the kids? No. Okay. <laughs> well, every now and then sometimes. <laughs> I do. I miss the grandkids. Now that we have a new one, maybe we need to go see them. Let's go visit the grandkids. Let's do that. Let's see how they're doing. As we sit here and wait and anticipate, Beautiful, wonderful, organic deer meat. All right, here's the big moment. Look at that. I wish you could smell that. Now, earlier, we talked about the fact that we had the oil in the bottom and the cornmeal, so it comes out easily. Oh, my goodness, if you could only smell the basil and the garlic and the rosemary. Now, if we take a big slab of butter and put it on that, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. I'm going to get this out of here right now. Now, while you walked over there and I was pulling the bread off a minute ago, mm -hmm. the piece fell off. I have got to tell you, you know, you, you always like the butter on the bread to really enhance right. the flavor. You almost don't need it. When the pepper and the garlic, the basil, and the rosemary just jumps out. It's perfect. Can I try? I think I might have to eat it all. <laughs> nice. hey, let me open this up. I'm gonna dip this out of plate all right. and get the roast out. This is gonna be a beautiful meal. We got our bread to sop it up with. It's not even Sunday, but it sure feels like it. Delish. You remember, you remember your mother would fix a roast on Sunday? Every Sunday. Look at the steam rolling off of that. Let me tell you what, that bread is fresh. <laughs> it smells so good. That is falling apart. I just checked it. Go ahead and cut us a little slice off of that. Now, again, I typically, for years, have been doing all my stuff. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> I don't even need to cut it, really. You can just pull that. When, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and get some juice. Let's get in here. Dip a little of that juice. That's delicious. <laughs> so tender. To me, a venison roast tastes better than a beef roast. Does it to you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm picking up the mustard. I'm picking up a little bit of sweet. But the sweet is not overpowering. But man, what a nice compliment. This may... All right, I'm not going to say I like this more than the current jelly and red wine. Okay. It's delicious. May I try some bread? You may. I just a Mmm. Wow. What a great way. Now, I'm really anxious. You're a bread lover. I do love bread. To get your reaction here. Let it sink in a little bit before you say anything. Tastes like something you get at a fancy restaurant. <laughs> it's really good. It's delicious. Mmm. Good job. This is delicious. I'm telling you what. Wow. I made a lot of bread. We've made a lot of bread. You've made a lot of bread. That's really good. This, you really need to try this. Mm. When I saw this recipe in the Lodge book, it was called like cracked pepper bread or something like that. Well, we've made breads like this before, but I thought, why not take it a step further? 
You are the king in the kitchen or the queen of the kitchen. You can do anything you want. And before long, your mind says, ooh, this would be good. And then you try that. You trust your instincts on this. This is seriously the best bread I've ever tasted. It's delicious. And I, I was just accidentally the one who made it. That yellow jacket wants something, but he can't have it. Mm. Good job. Excellent. Mm. So again, this went probably, oh, three and a half, maybe four hours, because I kind of got sidetracked. But it had time to really get all those flavors combined. When you hang it up on the fire, you got to babysit it a little bit more. You know, if you know, yeah. if you know you've got coals around it down here, you know you got a good steady 350. If you, if you hang it over the fire, your fire goes down. You can walk away, and a log will fall over. Your flames will come up. So you really got to babysit that more than you would do in a Dutch oven or in the house. But I like cooking over that fire like that. And let me tell you what, this is one of my favorite cowboy cooking segments we've ever done, taste-wise. You can't beat it. Look at this meat. You just you just you don't need to cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? People mm. say, "Oh, venison's this, roll venison's that." That's good. If you process it right, if you don't cut through the bone, I'm telling you what, it is some of the best meat in the world. It's one of the best rolls I've ever had. This is so delicious. I mean, you don't even need a you don't need a knife. Look at it. Just falls apart. I'm just pulling this apart. Venison, I'm telling you. If you can't get mm. it though, beef will work just fine with this recipe. Wow. You know what? Let's take a break and feed our faces. We'll be right back with a little surprise in a minute. <laughs> 